Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to talk about the Redux state management tool. Redux in particular is one of my very favorite state management solutions that we have in Flutter and Dart. We want to start with explaining how, what Redux is, how it works, where we want to go with it and at the end we will have a coding block where we work in our state management repository and add Redux to our already existing solution. And now without further ado, let's get ready and start this episode. Redux is a very important tool because it comes originally from React. So Facebook invented it actually because they had a very specific bug in their application and they figured out that they have to manage their state. And as you know, we have declarative uh, UI, we have a declarative um, development framework with Flutter. So Redux comes really handy because what happens here is it offers a lot of tooling to jump around to different states you are allowed to access the state right away and in my opinion it makes a lot of logical sense how Redux is working to manage the state. Redux has three principles. The first principle a single source of truth. The second one the state is immutable and the third one is that all changes made to the state are, have to be pure functions. That is fantastic because if you know me, you know that I really like if I get strict and clear information about how I should proceed with technology, especially in development. Because the more I get restricted by the framework itself, the fewer problems I create. So I really like that. So these three principles allows us, the first one for example, single source of truth means we have one store, one big object of information that we can change and that we can uh, find all the information. And this brings us two very big benefits. The first one is debugging. If something is changing in the store tree, we have the benefit that we directly see where it has changed and why it has changed, but later to that. The second part is state is read only. That means the state itself is canning only be accessed by reading it. If we want to change the values inside of the store or inside of the state, we completely have to remove it and replace it by a new version. We cannot mute it. And this has some benefits because we secure the store and we allow only actions to change the behavior of the state. And with that, we make sure we always understand the life cycle of the things. That creates boilerplate, but it helps us to fill and understand how the process has been worked. Because we make sure that the state is read, only actions are allowed to change that. And this gives us a lot of transparency. That means we know exactly who has changed it, when it has changed and why it has changed. And the state is never changed on accident. And because actions are plain Dart objects, it is easy to serialize them, to test them, to get information from them and so on and so forth. An action always triggers a reducer, which is the pure function that I told you. So the third part is changes to the state are only done with pure functions. That means for us that a pure function that is called in the Redux framework reducer changes the state. So only the reducers are allowed to access the state and replace it by a new version of it. All right, with that in mind, we know now that Redux consists out of three important parts. The action itself that triggers a change of the state. Then we have the reducers that actually is the implementation how the state will change and the store that contains our state in one single source of truth. And if we know that, now we are ready to jump into code and let's code a little bit of Redux state management. In order to get started with this tutorial, we head over to github.com mdweber state tutorial. You will find the link down in the video description below. Then you click on code and here you can select HTTPS, SSH or GitHub CLI, whatever floats your boat to clone the repository. Copy the repository, head over to Android Studio and here you have the possibility to start your tutorial. After we have cloned the project, we found on the bottom right the different branches where we can have to. This time we want to work in Redux, so I created a Redux solution branch and a Redux tutorial branch. And we check out the Redux tutorial branch. Inside of here we will find underneath scoped based project files all to-dos that we want to work with today. So you can open up all these different parts and you are ready to work. 
Don't forget to hit pubget in order to get all the latest packages to get started with the, your work. Alright, so now that all errors are gone, we can start with our different to-dos. And the first one is to add Fluttered Redux as a dependency. As you can see, inside of our pubspec.yaml, I created already the to-do with a link to Flutter Redux. And here we can go to installing, copy the link down here with the installing parameter and add that to our list of dependencies. We can remove the first to-do. Well done. Now as a second to-do, we want to create an app state that contains a list of empty drinks. As you see on the left side, I created already all the files that we will need. The app state is our single source of truth that contains the state of the app. And here we will usually have some pre-ideas on how we want to create the state before we actually start with coding. So class app state, and here we find a list of drink, drinks, and this one needs a constructor app state. And whenever we create an app state, we want to set this drinks list to an empty list. So now let's just import the drink and ready we are. So with that, we have solved already our second to do. Okay, so now switch to the third to do, create an update drink action. As you can see, I added everywhere also some part of the documentation so that you know what the parts are. An action is, as I said, the uh, glue between uh, the view and the UI that dispatches an action in order to change the state. So the action is the part that we really want to do. So for that now we create again a class because we will have a payload inside. And this class update drink action receives a drink, updated drink. And of course here we need also a constructor with this updated drink. Also here we have to import the drink model and we can remove the third to do. Now let's head over to to do number four create a reducer update drinks reducer. As you see already, this are quite some more to do's. We have to create the reducer, check which type the action is, return a new app state with the changes we want to do, and if the action is unknown, the type returns the previous state. But what is actually a reducer function? A reducer function is a basic function that returns the app state or a state and has a name, in our case, drinks reducer or update drinks reducer. Now this method update drinks reducer receives an app state, the current app state, and let me call that just state and an action. And because we don't know the type of action here, it can be any action. So that's why we call it dynamic. And inside of this reducer, we have now to check against every different action that we want to specify. And if we don't have this action in place, we just return the usual state. So we don't change anything in the store. So now let's check our action of which type it is. So we check against our update drink action. So here we do our mutation at the moment. And we say that the updated drink should be the opposite of the updated drink select at the moment. After that, we want to return a brand new state. So this state has nothing to do anymore with the old state. It is even not allowed from the Redux framework that a reducer modifies or mutate the state that it receives. So we get a new state that we return and this will be the newest state of the whole application. So now we pass in a new list of drinks and for that we use the old state drinks and map them and we receive here a list of drinks. So for each drink that is inside of the list of drinks, we check if the name is equal to the action updated drink dot name. And if they are equal, we want to return the updated drink else we want to just return the drink itself. 
Perfect. So if I order that, and last but not least, we should not forget to make the whole thing to a list after the mapping. So to list. Perfect. So because the app state drinks receives a list of drinks, we have to call the to list part down here. Perfect. Now that we have ready the state, let's remove our to do's up here. We have created our first reducer and we are now able to modify the state of the app. Let's head over to do number eight into our main.dart. We create our new store. The store is our living thing that contains the app state and we will use that a lot. In order to import the store, we cannot just write it down. We have to import manually Redux. If we have done that, actually it should get green. I create the variable and now we initialize our first store of type app state. Inside of here, we declare first our reducers. So update drinks reducer and import that one. We don't have to specify any, we just want to have the plain function here declared. The second thing that we want to do is we want to set the initial state of the store here. So we say app state, the first state that comes into this in the application with a new list of drinks. I will just recreate the list of drinks that we had already in our old project. Great. With that, to do number eight is solved. Now down here in to do number nine, we have to surround our Redux screen or the whole material app with a store provider widget. I will do it now here surrounding the whole material app, but it is enough to surround the Redux screen. It is important that it surrounds the whole application and not just a part of it because we have just one single store in our application. So we set up the store provider and inside of here, we specify the store, which is our store that we created seconds ago. And with that, to do number nine is solved. Well done. So let's head over to the to do number 10. Surround the column with a store connector. Now we are actually in one of our widgets that want to update its state as soon something changes in the store. So surround our column here with a store connector. So, and as the store connector states, it connects the store with the widget. And here we can specify the types. We know that our usual store contains the app state. And what we want to return from our store is a list of drink. So inside of the store connector, we don't have a child actually. But what we have is a so-called converter and a builder. So let's start with the converter. As you see, thanks to my settings up here, we can see we receive a store of app state and we want to return a list of drinks that you can see here. So if I activate this converter, we want to create a function. This function returns the store and returns store.state, which is our app state and here our drinks. And instead of a child, we have here a builder function. And this builder function receives a context and they call it a VM. But let's call it our state drinks. So as you see now, inside of this state drinks, we can type that as a list of drink. And as you see, everything is still green because with this converter, we convert the app state that we receive into whatever we want. So we can just have a partial of the stream here. Cool. So now we can use the state drinks, rather our drinks that we have here. And with that, we first solve the to-do number 10, surround the column with a store connector, and we converted the state into a list of drinks. Great. Now let's head over to to-do number 11. Use the state provider off to dispatch the action or our first action. So let's go here and say store provider dot off 
This is a static method, so we don't have to initialize the store provider. We receive the context, but we have to specify still the state. So here we have the app state, and now we say this batch, and our action that we want to dispatch is the update drink action. Now it asks us for the drink that we have. And the drink that we have is currently the value of this method. So, fantastic. So the state drinks getting mapped into different drinks and these drinks we return inside of here. As you see, this spread operator in the beginning does not works on the state itself. It works actually on the list that we mapped. So the list of different drinks widgets. So every of these drinks widgets gets spread into this list uh, or in this column. All right. In order to make it a little bit better, we would not update inside of our reducer function. If you remember, we checked in the reducer, we changed the selected state. Actually, this is not the best pattern. Usually what you would do is you would update the state here. Like you say drinks, if this is selected, we toggle the part at this place. And now we pass in the drink itself. Now we can remove that from the reducer part. Looks way cleaner and we know exactly that this reducer is just for the past part there where it updates the state. Cool. So now we can remove to do number 11 and we should be able already to select our first things. But we need to display that too, right? So let's head over to our last to do in our series. In the last to do, we replace the state drinks here with the drinks that we have from the state. So we call that state drinks. Maybe you remember still, we receive them from the converter up here and now we bring them down here and we can use them on both places. I already implemented here the where method that we get the drinks that sell are selected and after that we collect the list of them and show just the index that the item builder returns us to create the different list tiles. Great, let's see if the application is still working. We start up our application on an iPhone and let's see what happens. All right, so we see our basic app example. And if I press one of the checkboxes, you immediately see the update of the state. Fantastic. So with that, we have implemented our first Redux state management tool. All right, so now we know how Redux is working. We have implemented it and we followed the to do's to get where we are now. So now let's come to the last point that I want to mention. And this is the environment of Redux because Redux offers so many different things that are amazing, like the tooling. I don't know if you have ever seen the Chrome extension for Redux DevTools, but they are amazing. They really allows you to jump back and forth through the different actions. You have the possibility to see how the change has behaved in the different ways and in the different actions. If, for example, a HTTP request has been resolved, you get the information directly in the state, you see which parts have been changed, and you can directly understand where your state is going. So you can really go through the story of your state. And this makes, for example, debugging amazing. So for example, a customer sends you just a log, right, in usual applications. But with Redux, you would have the opportunity to get also information how the store has changed for the customer if you want to track that of course but there is so much tooling surrounding Redux pattern also in Flutter that I highly recommend you to check out the whole environment because it gives you so much power and more features to the store and state management. All right, so next video will be about Getit Mixins and Getit Mixins allows you to use the Getit package that we know already from Thomas Burkhardt to make it also to a state management solution. And you know me, I love state management in Flutter because the topic is so big. And if you have any questions regarding this topic or any other please let me know down in the comments below thanks for watching this episode until the next time thanks for watching see ya